Hello there and welcome to Techopia Live. Thank you very much for those of you that has joined us here, whether it be on live stream or YouTube or Twitter or even Facebook. If you don't know this by now, you should know that each and every Monday and Wednesday, we are out here showcasing a variety of the tech entrepreneurs, CEOs, executives and founders of phenomenal companies within our city as we showcase what's happening within the ecosystem and also keeping you up to date of what's happening and what you should not be missing out on. It's all about communicating what's happening in our industry, but also making sure that we showcase what is happening both locally and how we affect business, entrepreneurship, and tech innovation on a global perspective. Now today we are super excited because today we are talking agriculture and we don't talk agriculture enough and it is truly a growing industry and it's always an evolving industry. And today we are talking about a company that has decided to take farming indoors instead of just looking at wide open spaces and big plots of land, now bringing that inside with hydroponics. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit more today. But before we do that, I wanna remind you, if you haven't done so already, you can also sign up for our Techopia newsletter. Just go to techopia.email and you can get a weekly update on what's happening with Techopia. Now, let's get started here. I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, what we have to showcase here today. And before I do that, um, here to my right-hand side, we have the CEO of The Grocer, Corey Ellis. Thank you very much for joining us. And then right next to him, on his right-hand side, we have Maxim, that is representing the Faculty of Engineering, one mm -hmm. of our partners here at Techopia and also helping us to also kind of showcase what's happening within the tech industry. So thank you, Maxim, for joining me today. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So what we're going to do, we have a slew of questions for you, Chris, and we want to talk about this amazing container. That's, we <laughs> call it a container. It's, it's doing it injustice to say it's a container because it's so, so much more. Uh, but it just arrived here at Invest Ottawa or at the Bayview Yards. Um, and we want to showcase a little bit more what you're doing. But I'm going to throw it over to Maxim. Uh, Maxim, maybe you can throw in the first question there and let's take it from there. Sure. Um, thanks, Carl. Uh, Carlo. Um, I think this is a really cool topic because we have an event coming up from Design Day that features, as one of the themes, hydroponics. And uh, I'm still learning about it. And I was wondering, like, how do you grow? How do you, how do you manage to grow things in that big metal container? Yep. Yeah, so when you think about plant science, there's really only three things that plants need to grow. Um, yeah. And we optimize that so that they get everything they need in the right amounts. But really, it's quite simple. What they need is light, they need CO2, and they need nutrient-rich water. So if you introduce that uh, environment to a plant, no matter where it is, it'll grow perfectly fine. So we're using uh, fully automated LED lights, uh, control systems that regulate the environment, and we're actually doing a much better job at providing the plant everything that it needs to grow um, without it you know, being impacted by the climate. So we're growing in minus 59 Celsius, okay, wow. growing plants uh, commercially within a, a shipping container. Okay, yeah. it's awesome. super cool. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and it's, and it's exciting, the design day. I've been there as well. It's a spectacular day where you just bring together and once again showcase the, the engineering feats that uh, you know, the future has to hold, but also you know, the amazing students that's part of the specific program. Now, when we, it's, it's pretty obvious. When you look at this already, it can help a lot of people. But when you decided on this concept, when you decided in doing this, what was that target market? Who did you want to help? Yeah, when we started this company, we were actually working in northern Canada and we saw the food prices and the rate of food insecurity up north and realized that this is something that could really impact people's lives and if they had the ability to grow profitably in a place like Nunavut, um, you know, that could mean lower food prices, it could mean more consistency in the food and better quality food. Um, so that's really initially who we sought out to help uh, and now that we have a product that is really uh, robust, I think we can offer that to a much wider audience, but really our target remains on you know, Northern Canadians, Indigenous Canadians who really don't have that level of access to healthier foods that you know, most Canadians uh, you know, count on and, and take for granted, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I think with our systems now, one of these shipping containers can feed 108 people every single day uh, throughout the year. Like I said, my, whether it's minus 59 or plus 40, it'll, it'll grow commercially. Um, so it's quite exciting to actually have that kind of level of impact. Um, a lot of fun too. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna, I, 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 we're talking about the container being outside. I wish we could show you guys how this actually looks because it is 
pretty spectacular. It's, it's taken up several parking spots. Now I'm just kidding, about <laughs> that, which is a concern. But we're <laughs> but <laughs> exactly. But it is it's so exciting for, for many reasons. Not just to once again share what you're doing, but why did you work towards getting it here at the Bayview Yards and and giving you know interacting with other entrepreneurs and also Made Mill here as well. Uh, why, why was it such a key thing to make that happen? Yeah, well, I think Bayview is such an amazing resource to bring together a lot of different parts of the ecosystem that uh, you know, focus on trying to commercialize innovation in Canada. Um, most importantly, though, selfishly speaking, I think showing customers and partners what this actually does is really cool. Um, and I think it's very different than trying to sell them on a picture on our website or a rendering or videos. It's not the same than when you walk into the farm and you can actually see it growing commercially. Um, and the closest farm we have to us right now is, you know, in the subarctic. Uh, so it's it's not necessarily accessible. It's, you know, if you're willing to pay fifteen hundred dollars for flights to get up there, that's great. But uh, you know, being able to have it right outside our backyard and actually growing and selling the produce that's grown in it is uh, something that I think is really cool. So we we wanted to do this to be able to showcase what we're doing and showcase the innovation that's happening right here in Ottawa. Now, Maxim, I'm going to let you take over for a second because All I right. know we want to talk a little bit about uh, March 29th and the upcoming yes. design day as well. So uh, what's wonderful, you know, just Corey's a, a prime example of, of what can come to fruition and where those ideas start and where they are cultivated as well. So maybe you can share with us a little bit. I'll bring it up here on, on the actual screen behind us, but maybe you can share us some more about what the event holds and, and is it open to the public? When does it start? All those fun and exciting yeah. things. So, uh, the design day, we're now at our third edition. It's one of the biggest events that we have at the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Ottawa. And it's happening uh, this Thursday from 11 to uh, 1.30. Um, and uh, the cool thing about it is there's over 100 projects that are going to be showcased, and that's close to 500 students. Um, there's three main themes. The first one is hydroponics, so how to, um, how to grow um, produce and that's in partnership with the uh, Parkdale Food Center uh, out west so how to uh, grow it in the schools and community centers the second one also along this theme is um, building uh, houses uh, that are eco-friendly and water um, with high quality water for indigenous communities in the north um, and the third one is uh, robots that clean the shoreline from pollution and how to improve that and there's a bunch more um, topics come on in and join it's it's gonna be a really good event yes and I, I mean what's great about it once again it's just that there's this vibrant atmosphere and there's a lot of people hustling and bustling and there's demonstrations taking place the whole time as well so mm -hmm. everybody's and there's judges as well there's 20 judges exactly <laughs> that's just, just, a lot you just, you just see them pitching the whole time because this is what what they're aiming for and these judges are going through their <coughs> specific presentations and then mm -hmm. at the end of the day there's an actual award ceremony exactly right? and it uh, the cool thing mm -hmm. about it is it is designed like the engineers they're all students and they've been working it, um, at it in classes and outside of classes. And um, they're offering solutions for real clients. Like, they're all for real people. Mm. Beautiful. So, so no, as you say, it's open to the public. So it's great to come and see this. So mm -hmm. if you're a, a, a student already for support, or if you're somebody that's interested in possibly going into engineering, or you're yeah. a company that's looking for some awesome new ideas. Future to talent. Invest some, invest some money <laughs> in, or it's like, I got to get behind this idea before uh, it becomes so awesome, mm -hmm. like uh, the grocer. Because exactly. um, probably people are like, oh man, I, should, I saw him. I should have gotten involved <laughs> here, but oh, yeah, I waited too long. So this is a great day to do that. Now, um, just back to you, Corey. Maybe you can talk to a little bit. You know, another program that's part of uh, you, Ottawa, is the Enactus program as well, which is a wonderful opportunity to bring entrepreneurs together, support them. How did that system support you in, in, in pushing the growth a little bit forward as well? Yeah, I think, you know, Enactus is this great organization of students that uh, think that business can be a tool to have social and environmental impact. And that was really, I guess my experience in Enactus over the last four years was the catalyst for thinking in this way, that, you know, you could create a business that, you know, was for profit uh, and scalable and all these things that we're looking for when we businesses but at the same time that it's driven by kind of a mission that is social so um, when I was in Enactus you know we started a handful of businesses at least half a dozen in my time there uh, and really saw them from ideation you know validation got them all the way to market and we tried to scale them and so uh, this was actually an Enactus project we started this with Enactus students and then we realized like this thing can really take off and it's got its own legs of its own and so for the last year um, we're in the process now of, of doing this full time and transitioning it 
to what we hope is going to be a, a huge commercial success. So, uh, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, the students in Annapolis, we're 100 or so uh, every year, and there's a really great team of students every year that arrive in first year on the doorsteps of the University of Ottawa that are thinking this way. They're wondering, you know, how can I do more than just you know, make money or just have a day job that's nine to five? You know, they're looking for that level of um, purpose, I guess, and you know, Annapolis is that outlet for them. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm, yeah. Great mission. I love it. Yeah, it, it, it's such a great program. I mean, it's uh, it, I, I've been a part of an actus as well. I've actually helped mentor there as well. So I really love that environment, and I think it's once again such a great opportunity to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. So it's so wonderful to see yourself here, and just you know the steps that you've taken up to this point. So I, I'll ask you one more question. I mean, it's it's almost I guess obvious what the next steps are, but what do you see for the grocer, and what do you see for the company for the next three to five years? You know, I think. Um, we can do a lot with the technology we have now to allow any community, uh, not only in Northern Canada, but in Canada in general, to be more self-reliant. So I'd love to see a grocery system in every uh, major city in Canada. Uh, but I'm, I'm really excited also to showcase um, you know, uh, Canada's unique ability to respond to our own challenges and share that with other countries around the world that have similar climates and face similar challenges. Um, something really exciting is that our systems actually use very little water. So when we're looking at long-term scale opportunities, I think there's a big opportunity in places where there's water shortage or uh, water contamination. And I think um, you know, First Nations <coughs> in Canada are probably the most prominent example of that in our own country. And that's kind of one place we can target our efforts right now. Uh, but long-term, I think there are also a lot of places around the world that similarly can't have access to food because of their water issues. So um, it's great to see that the design day is focusing on that, but mm -hmm. also uh, yeah, I think, I think like I said, I'd love to, to see this everywhere, and you know, of course, but, um, but I think we can really target our efforts in areas that um, our technology can really benefit. So there we go. For those of you that are watching this, thank you very much for joining us today. Firstly, thank you very much, Maxim, that is here today representing the Faculty of Engineering at University of Ottawa. And thank you very much for your support and the upcoming uh, design that's coming up on March 29th. It's going to be spectacular. So whether you're an engineer yourself or whether you'd like to be part of the engineer or faculty in general or whether you're just a business guy that needs to get behind it or Anyone you just want to see some cool ideas. I mean, there's some super cool things there. So make sure you go and check that out. And then, of course, Corey, thank you so much for stepping in today. Um, I know you were recently on CBC as well. We're like, oh my goodness, he's been on CBC. He should have been on Tecopia first. So, <laughs> I was like, oh. You missed it, you missed it. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know about the container. I was like, oh. But I'm so glad you made some time for us. It is yeah. wonderful that, once again, we, we are getting the word out there and, and there's so much for you to give uh, to not just uh, entrepreneurs out there, uh, but also agriculture now, of course, and then, of course, just general technology that you're sharing with us. So thank you so much for that. Congratulations on all the success, and we look forward in seeing the grocer frequently and more often as we move forward. Well, thank you for having me, Carlo. You're Appreciate welcome. It. Thank you so much. So we're going to leave now, and we're going to go check out this awesome container, and we're actually going to get something from it, or look at it at least. Um, but thank you very much for joining us. Make sure you join us next time here on Take Up Your Live. We'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.